How's it going, people? I just couldn't resist doing one more chapter. I'm going to stop after this one, though. No, no more three first, but I, I might double up on some of these. I don't know. Not reading ahead. A little tempting. I've glanced at been glancing at third Nephi actually instead. Right, chapter five. Nephi yields a judgment seat to Caesoram. Like in Caesar, Caesoram. With his brother Lehi, he devotes himself to the ministry. Nephi. Marvelous manifestations. Converted Lamanites restore conquered Nephite lands. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think there might be some kind of lame miracles coming up. There might be some, but if I remember right, they're kind of lame, or at least not so original. I mean, some, you know, some ripoffs from Daniel and stuff coming up. Like I said, I read this a year or two ago. One. And it came to pass. I read it sober the first time. Mostly sober. Uh, that in this same year, behold, Nephi delivered up the judgment seat to a man whose name was Caesoram. Two. For as their laws and their governments were established by the voice of the people, and they who chose evil were more numerous than they who chose good, Therefore, they were ripening for destruction. For the laws had become corrupted. Three. Yea. And this was not all. They were a stiff-necked people. Insomuch that they could not be governed by the law nor justice. Never mind. Save it were to their destruction. Or, and it came to pass. that Nephi had become weary because of their iniquity, and he yielded up the judgment seat. Way to quit. <laughs> Take your ball and go home, biatch. We don't need you. Uh, you become a bigger nuisance, I'm sure. He yielded up the judgment seat and took it upon himself to preach the word of God. All the remainder of his days, and his brother Lehi also. Is that it? He's just a shadow. <laughs> All the remainder of his days. That's it, huh? I don't know. I'm just fucking. I, don't know. I forget what this, where this is going. Uh, five. For they remembered the words which their father, Helaman, spake unto them. And these are the words which he spake. And this is a dry spell, sorry. He spake it. Six. Behold, my sons, I desire that ye should remember to keep the commandments of God. And I would that ye should declare unto the people these words. Behold, I have given unto you the names of our first parents, who came out of the land 
of Jerusalem, and this I have done that when you remember your names, ye may remember them. And, and when ye remember them, ye may remember their works. And when ye remember their works, ye may know how that it is said and also written that they were good. Uh, seven. Therefore, my sons, I would that ye should do that which is good. That it may be said of you, and also written of, uh, even as it has been said and written of them, Eight. And now, my sons, behold, I have somewhat more to desire of you. Which desire is that ye may not do these things which ye, that ye may boast, but that ye may do these things to lay up for yourselves a treasure in heaven. Oh, is that how it works? Oh. I see. <laughs> I get it now. You're laying up a treasure in heaven by sucking up down here. I get it. Yay! Which is eternal in heaven. Yeah, never, never land forever. It's real, honestly, because you want it. It has to be. What if it isn't? Well, that just can't be, right? Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a down. I'm a being a buzzkill, aren't I? <laughs> Alright, where the fuck am I? Eternal! And which fadeth not away, because it's eternal. Yea, that ye may have that precious gift of eternal life, which we have reason to suppose hath been given to our fathers. So that's the classic carrot on the end of a stick, isn't it? You follow it the rest of your life, and you never do get a bite of that fucking carrot, do you? Well, let's say nobody's come back to complain that they were gypped, right? So it must be true. <sighs> Which we have reason to suppose hath been given to our fathers. This gift of eternal life. <sighs> Sounds like a friend of Lestat. <laughs> Nine. Oh, remember, remember, my sons, the words which King Benjamin spoke unto his people, yea, remember, they think you're thick, don't they, <laughs> remember, <laughs> that there was no other way nor means whereby man can be saved only through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Who shall come for your selfish needs? Yay! Remember that he cometh to redeem the world by dying. And then a bunch of Never Never Land shit happens. Ten. And remember also the words which Amulek spake unto Zezra in the city of Ammonihah. For he said unto him that the Lord surely should come to redeem his people. 
but that he should not come to redeem them in their sins, but to redeem them from their sins. Nice of us. Eleven. And he has power given unto him from the Father. I thought he was the Father. Is he a meat puppet? Is that what it is? He's a meat puppet? An avatar? God sliding into a uh, flesh sock? Oh. It kind of makes a fraud out of his whole uh, suffering sacrifice. Especially when all biblical sacrifices are burnt offerings. I don't remember them setting them alight. Then he's not a proper sacrifice. <sighs> I'm what am I? I'm not a I'm not a witch doctor. I don't know. I, might, I could be wrong. Chime in. Eleven, and he had power given unto him from the Father to redeem them from their sins because of repentance. Therefore, he hath sent his angels to declare the tidings of the conditions of repentance, which bringeth unto the power of the Redeemer, capitalized, unto the salvation of their souls. I've never had any of these angelic visits, and my door's always open to them, because you don't need a door. Hey, if Alma Jr., who rejected every all this and was an enemy of all this to become a fucking saint because an angel shows up and forcibly changes them it turns this whole thing into kind of a fraud just like the apostle Paul on the road to uh, Antioch it's been a while alright 12 and now my sons Remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God. Yeah, that's not a bunch of psychobabble, is it? That ye must build your foundation. Really? That when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds. What's he going to do, fart at me? <laughs> Yay! His shafts in the whirlwind. Ooh. Yay! When all his hail, that's H-A-I-L, is in the falling ice shit, uh, and his mighty storm shall beat upon you. Sounds like a farm boy wrote this. It shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation Whereupon, if men should build, they cannot fall. I see. Thirteen. And it came to pass. A oh, fucking time. Shut the fuck up, Elaman. You're dead. Damn. Oh, that. These were the words which Helaman taught to his sons. Yea, he did teach them many things which were not written, thanks, <laughs> and also many things which were written. Fourteen, <laughs> and they did remember his words. And therefore they went forth, keeping the commandments of God, to teach the word of God among all the people of Nephi. 
beginning at the city bountiful. Fifteen, and from thenceforth to the city of Gid, <coughs> and from the city of Gid to the city of Ulick. Sixteen, and even from one city to another until they had gone forth among all the people of Nephi who were in the land southward from thence into the land of Zarahemla among the Lamanites. Seventeen and not. Rainier, as in the mouth. That's better. And it came to pass <clears throat> that they did preach with great power, insomuch that they did confound many of those dissenters who had gone over from the Nephites. And so much that they came forth and did confess their sins and were baptized unto repentance and immediately returned to the Nephites to endeavor to repair unto them the wrongs which they had done. 18. And it came to pass... that Nephi and Lehi, me and my shadow, did preach unto the Lamanites with such great power and authority. For, for they had power and authority given unto them that they might speak. And they also had what they should speak given unto them. <clears throat> 19. Therefore, they did speak unto the great astonishment of the Lamanites, with apparently a prepared speech. Or they do like I do and just don't plan the thing and just, if it doesn't suck too bad, it goes up with a little editing. to convincing them, the Lamanites, insomuch that they were 8,000 of the Lamanites who were in the land of Zarahemla and round about baptized unto repentance and were convinced of the wickedness of the traditions of their fucking fathers. All right. I added that part. The expletive. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck our fathers. I don't know about that one. Sounds like, you know, it goes against honor thy father and thy mother. Twenty. And it came to pass. I mean, aren't they telling you to dishonor your parents? Just saying. That Nephi and Lehi did proceed from thence to go to the land of Nephi. 
21. And it came to pass. <laughs> that they were taken by an army of the Lamanites and cast in a prison. Yay. Even in that same prison in which Ammon and his brethren were cast by the servants of Limhi. We all remember that, right? I don't care to look it up right now. All right, fuck it. Uh, Mosiah 7, 6 through 8. That means nothing to me. <laughs> 22. And after they had been cast into prison many days without food, Behold, they went forth into the prison to take them that they might slay them. Time for a little miracle. 23. And it came to pass. That Nephi and Levi were encircled about as if by fire. Shades of the Book of Daniel with uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abimdigo, right? Kind of remember. Even in so much that they durst not lay their hands upon them for fear, lest they should be burned. Nevertheless, Nephi and Lehi were not burned. And they were not as standing in the midst of fire and were not burned. It's kind of like two ways to say the same fucking thing and make a verse twice as long as it needs to be. On gold. Just say. 24. And when they saw that they were encircled about with a pillar of fire, a pillar? Okay, okay fine. Uh, and that it burned them not. Their hearts did take courage, I'll bet. 25. And they saw that the Lamanites durst not lay their hands upon them, neither durst they come near unto them, but stood as if they were struck dumb with amazement, which I'm sure they were, if this happened. And I doubt that. 26. And it came to pass... That Nephi and Lehi did stand forth and began to speak unto them, saying, Fear not, for behold, it is God that has shown unto you this marvelous thing in the which is shown unto you that ye cannot lay your hands upon us to slay us, Biak. 27. And behold, when they had said these words, the earth shook exceedingly, shades of the book of Matthew, who's fond of earthquakes, <clears throat> and exaggeration. The earth shook exceedingly, and the walls of the prison did shake as if they were about to tumble to the earth. But behold, they did not fall.
Get the thing. Godzilla soundtrack. Best of from 84 to 95. One of my favorite soundtracks. And behold, they that were in the prison were Lamanites and Nephites who were dissenters. 28, excuse me. I got a little left in this one first. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that they were <coughs> overshadowed with a cloud of darkness <coughs> and an awful solemn fear came upon them. 29. It came to pass. And it came to pass that there came a voice as if it were above the cloud of darkness, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, and seek no more to destroy my servants. Talk about Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> whom I have sent unto you to declare good tidings. 30. And it came to pass. When they heard this voice and beheld that it was not a voice of thunder, neither was it a voice of a great tumultuous noise. But behold, it was a still voice of perfect mildness, mildness, perfect mildness, nice and as if it had been a whisper, and it did pierce even to my very soul. That's it, I'm convinced. All right, not really. Uh, 31. And notwithstanding the mildness of the voice, behold, the earth shook exceedingly, Screensaver came on. And the walls of the prison trembled again as if it were about to tumble to the earth. And behold, the cloud of darkness which had overshadowed them did not disperse. Damn it. 32. And behold, the voice came again, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm all scared now. And seek no more to destroy my servants. <clears throat> kind of what he said before. 
Is this one of those three times a charm deals? And it came to pass in the middle of 32. That the earth shook again and the walls trembled. 33. And also again the third time. That's just so surprising. Uh, the third time the voice came and did speak unto them marvelous words which cannot be uttered by man. Wow, now I'm totally impressed. And the walls did tremble again. And the earth shook as if it were about to divide asunder. Isn't asunder kind of, forget it. I mean, it's apart. Uh, uh, 34. And it came to pass in the nick of time. <coughs> That the Lamanites could not flee because of the cloud of darkness, which did overshadow them. I'll bet it did. Yea, and also they were immovable because of the fear which did come upon them. Ah, a little repetition there, right? But we needed that for some reason. For the poetry. Poetry is fine, but I was thinking if I were writing on gold, I'd be like one of those, you know, people that work at a, the old telegraph office in the old days. <coughs> they, I wouldn't be mincing words. 35. And there was one among them who was a Nephite by birth. Who had once belonged to the Church of God, but had descended from them. Shame on him. 36. And it came to pass. Oh. That he turned him about and beheld peace. Behold, he saw through the cloud of darkness the face of Nephi and Lehi. And shades of Moses and Aaron. And behold, they did shine exceedingly. <coughs> Even as the faces of angels, we would assume. And he beheld that they did lift their eyes to heaven. And they were in the attitude as if talking or lifting their voices to some being whom they beheld. I see people like that every day. I mean, I work in the downtown area, and I see lots of prophets. <laughs> they just did, the timing wasn't right for them. That's all. Too bad. Uh, Thirty-seven. And excuse me. I didn't realize this chapter was so thirsty. Ugh. 
I may have to break for uh... Oh, excuse me. All right. Was, uh... Oh yeah. Chapter 37. And it came to pass. That this man did cry unto the multitude that they might turn and look. And behold, there was power given unto them that they did turn and look. And they did behold the faces of Nephi and Lehi. And they said unto the man, Behold, what do all these things mean? And who is it with whom these men do converse? 39. Now, the man's name was Aminadab, and Aminadab said unto them, They do converse with the angels of God. See how easily they're fooled? 40. And it came to pass. that the Lamanites said unto him, What should we do that this cloud of darkness may be removed from overshadowing us? 41. And Aminadab said unto them, You must repent and cry unto the voice, even until ye shall have faith in Christ who was taught unto you by Alma and Amulek and Zeezra. And when ye shall do this, the cloud of darkness <coughs> shall be removed from overshadowing you. 42. And it came to pass... Ah, a lot thirstier than I thought. That they did began to cry unto the voice of him who had shaken the earth. Yea, they did cry even until... I turned the page. The cloud of darkness was dis dispersed. Oh. 43. <coughs> there it is. And it came to pass. That, when they cast their eyes about, they saw that the cloud of darkness had dispersed. From overshadowing them, behold, they saw that they were encircled about, yea, every soul by a pillar of fire. How handy. 44. And Nephi and Lehi were in the midst of them, yea, they were encircled about, yea, they were as if in the midst of flaming fire, 
Yet it did harm them not. Neither did it take hold upon the walls of the prison, and they were filled with that joy which is unspeakable and full of glory. 45. And behold, the Holy Spirit of God did come down from heaven and did enter into their hearts. And they were filled as if with fire. And they could speak and they could speak forth marvelous words. Forty six. And it came to pass. That there came a voice unto them, yea, a pleasant voice, as if it were a whisper, saying, 47, Peace, peace be upon you, because of your faith in my well-beloved who was from the foundation of the world. 48. And now, when they heard this, they cast up their eyes as if to behold uh, from which the voice came. And behold, they saw the heavens open. And angels came down out of heaven and ministered unto them. And there were about 300 souls who saw and heard these things. So I'm convinced. They said it right there. That's enough for me. Uh, and they were bit. To go forth and marvel not, neither they should doubt. Neither should they doubt. Yeah, don't be doing that. Don't be doubt. Fifty. And it came to pass. Uh, that. They did go forth and did minister unto the people, declaring throughout all the regions round about all the things which they had heard and seen, insomuch that the more part of the Lamanites were convinced of them. Good enough for me. Because of the greatness of the evidences which they had received. Lucky them. 51. And as many as were convinced and lay down their weapons of war and also their hatred and their traditions of their fathers. So they're not going to honor their fathers. Fifty-two, and it came to pass for the last time. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <sighs> that they did yield up unto the Nephites, the lands of. Their possession, and that's it for five. That's it for me. I've had enough. So, I will see you guys in uh, chapter six. So, it's got to get better. Right?
piece. The fuck? Ow. Have a wonderful. What the fuck it is you're having? Because I ain't doing another video tonight. I'm done. Bye. Nap time.